um, topics, but I do want to wish a happy birthday to Lupe Fiasco, celebrating his 40th, and Conway the Machine is also celebrating his 40th. Ice T is celebrating his 64th, so we got like a, a really good group of uh, birthdays today, man. Ice T, Conway, and Lupe. I mean, this is a it's a good MC uh, <clears throat> astrological month from from that perspective, you know. If you look at from going from January 28th just to, you know, February 28th, some of the best to ever have been born in this 30-day span. You just named, you know, we've Cole, Ross, Rockham, Conway, Lupe. That's yeah. five, that's five hitters right there. Ice-T makes an innovator and a pioneer, so, you know. Uh, Nas the Goat says the halftime show was terrible. Yo, I want to get into all of the terrible uh intricacies of that but you know we want people to continue to come in the room shout out to everybody that's coming in the room everybody saying what's up um you know y'all can hit our cash app or whatever hit the mini chat y'all know how that goes um what's your favorite conway song do you have a favorite conway song or is it more of a conway verse i know you're probably gonna say jesus crisis right jesus crisis is just, yeah i'm with that it's I'm absurd that. mike it's absurd it's it's quite like lyrically, it's like quiet storm, like made you look type of level bar performance. That's why I was like, no, that's nothing on like normal mic performance. That's like a kick in the door mic performance. Um, but he's got stuff everywhere. Uh, Jesus Crisis is probably the solo mission song. You know, like that solo song, like like. Mm -hmm. The MCs, what I like to have, like MC moments where they just kind of go off on the mic and you like, yeah, that's their moment. Jesus Christ, this is his moment by himself to me. Kind of very similar to how we look at uh, lyrics of Fury for Rock M, mm -hmm. where it's like, no, he has better songs, but the but the MC moment. I you mean, I think that Conway is your kind of MC, right? And he's my kind of MC too. I like. I like guys like him, Pusha T, and on other spectrums, I like, you know, the Method Mans, the Red Mans of the world. I mean, and I think we covered this last episode where I was saying that I like the Kendrick Lamar that's a spitter. Um, so, I right. mean, it's like, that's my kind of MC, and I think that in the vein of a prodigy um, or whatnot, Conway fits that lane of your kind of MC. He does. He he. He reminds me the you know the intention, Mike, the intentionality with which he writes the perspective, the intention of the perspective reminds me of Prodigy more than anybody else. Yeah. And Prodigy I love as much like and feel as much as I probably felt any MCs. There are some MCs you just got to feel. Yeah, you know? no, you're right. And it's like he's a spitter, but he makes you feel. Right. And I think there's only a few guys who've done that. You know, we we've covered this on the show too. Beanie Siegel is one of those. Um, you know what? Scarface. Scarface definitely one of those. But I don't think Scarface is a spitter like Siegel and Conway and those guys are. He makes you feel on a different level. I think that Ghostface is a spitter that makes you feel. I mean, how about this? Face doesn't have. Mike, go listen to the last song on the Diary. Like, yeah. he, like, he's not what you would call a spitter, but it's only because he kind of chose not to have exactly. those moments. Exactly. Like Ice Cube. <laughs> like, he, like Tupac. Yeah. Right. But he had, no, see, Tupac doesn't have those moments. Like, Cube might have, Cube really doesn't have those moments either. Face got a couple moments where it's like, Ugh, I don't know, like Mac and Brad, where he's going back and forth with Seagull. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nah, these guys are top notch, and Conway. I, I know people think we overrate Conway when we say he belongs in those conversations, but on a skill set level, and I think that if he were in a different era, this would be no question. If Conway was in the 90s, he blends right in with everything that's going on. Uh, I think Benny does to a certain extent too, but Conway a little bit more because he makes you feel things on a different level. Now, Lupe is a straight-up spitter. And, you know, happy birthday to him as well. And I think when we talk about bar for bar and guys that um, have had mainstream success and notoriety or whatnot, it's a lot yeah. of, I mean, it's not a lot of people that you can sit here and say word for word can fuck with Lupe like that. And, I, and you know, I, we saw that with the Royce and Lupe thing that happened last year. Uh, and, and Royce is top notch, nearly as top notch as it gets. But it was clearly different, man. Um, you know, 
Lupe and Mickey Fax, man, they do something different, man. They are some, they consistently write. And I don't know if you follow Mickey Fax on uh, Instagram, but he's doing like his Black History Month bars, like, like every other day or something. He's picking a person in Black History and doing like a minute verse about them. And it's like, who does this? Like these guys do this shit for fun. And the fact that Lupe was like, look, I can make an album, even though he didn't put it out, I can make an album in 24, 48 hours or something. You know what I mean? And it's like, I believe it. I mean, it can be done. I mean, high level done. He went out there and what Lupe did with the Royce thing, he went out there and memorized Royce's verse about him and then went and did a whole nother diss record. And it was like, dude, Brain power moving at a whole different rate. And I get everybody when they talk about the Kendrick stuff, and we're going to say that in a minute, but um, it's like there's no excuse for that, at least not on the writing end. If you want to do that on a composition end, yes. There's no excuse for that. These guys are putting together high-level bars very swiftly. Their brain is moving differently. I mean, what's your favorite Lupe song? Man. I think that, again, his most impressive moment for me was Mural. Like, but see, again, that's the kind of stuff I like. So when I heard Mural for the first time, I was like, whoa. I, it made me uh, immediately think, like, how many people in my top whatever, whatever can do this? So here's my thing with Mural. I look at Mural very much in the same vein that I look at Nature of the Threat by Razzcats. Of course. OK, <clears throat> so lyrically speaking and in terms of framework and how you're contextualizing, it's operating at the highest level ever. But what I would also submit to you is, is that I find Dumb It Down to be just as impressive and better put together as a song. And so I'm going to lean on Dumb It Down instead of Mural. OK, I, I figured you were going to go Dumb It Down. Let me go ahead and um, man, so I don't get any disturbances. Let me go ahead and uh, uh, put my phone on Do Not Disturb. But go ahead. What were you saying? And Go-Go Gadget flow in the cool is shortly thereafter. So you like the cool more than you like um, uh, food and liquor? I do. I do, too. I think it's a better album. Straight up. Not by a lot, not by a lot but better, yes. He's okay. better. It's just, it's just it. He is better. Yeah, like Go Go Gadget Flow lyrically is better than everything like on Food and Liquor, like with the exception of like two records. Like, Mike, that's the first song on the cool. <laughs> I'm just going to go in airplane mode, man. Sometimes you got to take flight, Mike. <laughs> this shit is crazy, man. My phone just boom, boom, boom. But yeah, welcoming everybody into the room, man. And like I said, happy birthday to um, Lupe Fiasco, Conway the Machine, and Ice-T as well. What's your favorite Ice-T record? It's not even because of the record. It's because of the um, the video. It's one of the first videos I remember. Uh, the Dope Dealer video where he's in the mansion. Colors? Like the no, no, it's not colors. I know what you're talking about. I'm your pusher? Is that yeah, what I'm your pusher. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. that's one of the first rap videos I remember. I'm like, who is this guy? And how is he living? And what is he doing? Whatever he's doing is wrong. Like, even you're a kid, you know... Like, it's like, oh, no, something about this guy. Like, it's wrong, but you like that it's wrong. You ain't even know. I'm that's super it, young. but you know what? I think that's going to take us into the Super Bowl conversation, though. Yes. That's cool. hip-hop. That's what hip-hop is about. Hip-hop yeah. is anti-establishment. Yeah. And, it felt um, anti-establishment. There you go, Mike. The video felt anti-establishment, even the music. I mean, <laughs> honestly, man, and, and I, can, I don't know if I can contest with everybody in this room because everybody kind of comes from different generations of hip-hop, but... I think that was the big draw for me, where it was like, yo, man, this is our music, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Our parents had theirs. And I remember that the, uh, the old school stations used to say that. You know what I'm saying? The R&B stations that our parents listened to, they would say, the kids have their station and you have yours. And yes, Ice-T was the epitome of that anti-establishment type of energy. N.W.A. was as well. Public Enemy was on their level, but they were actually educating you. You know, KRS, when Wu-Tang came through, the shit is dirty, grimy, 
rhyming crazy. And those are the things that if you ask me, especially as a kid and even now, I don't want to see shadow boxing on the Grammy stage. Do you? I don't want to see Jizz's shadow boxing featuring Method Man on the Grammy stage. I don't. I'd rather see it on Teen Summit. I'd rather see it on Rap City. It's different, man. I get what you, I, I, I don't want to see it. No, I get what you're saying. <laughs> I could argue with you about it, but I do understand. No, what but what you're do saying. you, what, how would you like to see it and why? Okay, so wh why can't we just see it everywhere? Hold on, Mike. Is it not one of the more, I always look at, at it like when we're gone and we're not here, what could we showcase? Now, Mike, as far as beat making, and lyrical capability of emceeing. Shadow boxing is great reference point for any point in hip hop. And so it belongs everywhere in my estimation. That's, but I understand what you're trying to say about the frame of it. Like, but for me, I'm just saying, if it's hip hop and it's our culture, it's like, what is this about? This is about beats, rhymes, and life. Well, it's like, how many beats are better than that? And how many mic performances are better than that? Not a lot. So it belongs everywhere where hip hop belongs. I think, I think but the I mean, thing is like, though, you know, when we, we want to go back to the origins of this thing, you know, and not to get too nerdy before we get into the Super Bowl discussion. Um, hip hop was created out of a need of being able to be yourself and not conform. You know, the disco clubs wouldn't allow you in if you weren't dressed a certain way or looked a certain way. And that is what those park jams were built on. The fact that, yo, we can do our own thing our way, however we want to do it. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, conformity to me is the last thing that is real hip hop. It, you know, I know people use that term too much and overused a lot. But when we talk about real hip hop, it could be anything as long as you're not conforming your art to certain specifications just to fit in. So, so hold on. So, Mike, I have a question. Hip hop okay. leads the trends. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just have a question for you. So, let's go back to this Wu Tang and the whole shadow boxing thing. So, Mike, isn't playing Triumph instead of shadow boxing on a big stage like that kind of conforming? It is. Okay. And, you know, and I remember Russell Simmons saying that, you know, they did it, they put all that money, and this was his opinion. They put all that money behind Triumph, and it was a beautiful video, but he was like, in his opinion, the Cream video was much better. And it didn't take all of that, you know? And it's like, it's a different feeling. And I, again, I love Triumph. They were, Triumph is a perfect example of you polishing up what you're doing. They were clearly better MCs at that point, right? You know, things were clearly more polished. The video had a bigger budget but it was not better than that stuff that they made just on some raw shit. And that's just the truth. It doesn't give you that feeling. Somebody could say on a technical level, it is better, whatever, whatever. Cause bar for bar, yes, they were killing it. But you can't sit here and tell me, Triumph makes you feel the way that shadow boxing makes you feel, or that cream makes you feel, or incarcerated Scarfaces make you feel, or that bring the pain makes you feel, or Brooklyn Zoo makes you feel. It just doesn't. I mean, Mike, as a song, I find Triumph to be possibly their most overrated song because just truthfully speaking, after debt and meth's verses, there's just a drop off. I don't care what anybody says. And so that's my quibble with the song is that the beginning is so epic and, and the way meth keeps it up is so epic. And then everybody else is just, I mean, they're dope, but it's just, it's not the same. I actually look at- You Triumph. can't keep up that momentum like that though. Like the way that meth was able to keep up what Deck what just Deck did, did yeah. is, oh, that was some, special. is crazy. That was special. No, that was you special. Know, and we're going to talk <laughs> about, we're going to talk about meth and Snoop too, man, because I think those two are the only guys. And I've always said this too, like, guys who have big auras and big crews. And there's not anybody like those guys. Mm -hmm. They're pretty much one of ones. And we sit here and talk about the catalog of meth. And I know I've been very critical of it because he was my favorite rapper growing up. But when you look at what he's been able to do collaborative wise, 
in the Wu-Tang and standing out in a group like that is special.